Hello again, it's uh, Paul Beckwith, and uh, you know, I just had to uh, deal with the cat fight between videos. Uh, Shaki uh, got kind of jealous that um, I had Sally in here, you know, doing a video with Sally, and he kind of came in and started like for her, so they ended up running off fighting each other, so I had to chase him and kind of bring him, bring him back here, and he's still a little bit uh, out of joint, out of sorts because, uh, you know, uh, his, his uh, sister is becoming a video star and he doesn't want to lose that. Uh. But anyway, um, I'm continuing my discussions about the connections between large storms, large hurricanes, large typhoon, and uh, vibration of the earth. So the disturbance in the atmosphere, which is the hurricane, moves an awful lot of water over and when it when that water the weight of that water long um, period waves goes over the continental shelves it can cause vibrations at certain frequencies that can reach some sort of resonance and it can trigger these uh, storm quakes on the continental shelves and those vibrations can travel across the continent of say North America and as I showed in the previous video trigger uh, earthquakes off the coast all the way on the other side of the continental shelf or, or on the continent. So, so this is Sandy here and as it was moving north up the coast and this is in 2012 it triggered all of these sensors across the continent you know not uniformly bunch all the this bunch here a bunch here some up here and there was a 7.7 .7 Actually, later it was reclassified to 7.8 magnitude earthquake off Haida Gwaii, Vancouver, Canada. Okay, Sandy continued to move up the coast the same day, and just before she turned left, these, si these seismic sensors, which had died down, then were, were, were picked, triggered again. So there was some resonance reached, and it triggered these sensors, and then there was a 6.3 earthquake off Haida Gwaii. And lo and behold, a couple days later, on October 30th, you know, Sandy did her left turn and headed, came ashore, impacted, you know, made landfall, and vibrated the sensors again, hitting another resonance. And lo and behold, there was a magnitude 6.2 earthquake over there. So I talked about this quite a bit back when it happened. And uh, then a few years later, you know, there were, and, and I kind of been looking, so whenever there's uh, large, tor uh, large tornadoes, whenever there's large hurricanes or typhoons or cyclones, you know, I'm always watching out for, you know, earthquakes being triggered based on um, what was seen here in 2012. Okay, so there were the three quakes, 7.8, 6.3, 6.2. Um, the biggest one occurred first when Sandy was moving north up the east coast and then 15 hours later, 16 hours later almost, there was a second one, 6.3, and then a couple days later when Sandy moved ashore, it was, uh, there was a 6.2, okay? And I wrote about it back at the time. You can just Google, Google this title, Did Sandy Trigger Major Earthquakes Off Vancouver? And you can read the notes that I the, my comments at the time. Um, okay, so then just a few years ago, I did a couple videos. I did three videos. I revisited this question, can hurricanes trigger earthquakes? Because September 8, 2017, Hurricane Irma chewed up the Caribbean. There was a magnitude 8.1 earthquake in Mexico. On September 19th, it was Hurricane Maria's time, and that's the one that devastated Puerto Rico. There was a 7.1 quake, and a volcano went off near Mexico City. Okay, and then I talked about in 2012, as Hurricane Sandy moved up, the 400 seismic sensors lit up. There was a 7.8. Sandy turned left, sensors lit up, 6.3. And Sandy went ashore in New York, sensors lit up again, a third quake of 6.2. Okay, so I did a series of videos examining that. Okay, um, and you can look at my blog and those videos from a couple of years ago.
And the reason I'm talking about this again is because of the typhoon and the 5.7 earthquake in Japan. So I've tweeted all these things out and you can have a look on my Twitter feed because of this uh, recent report here about scientists discover big storms called stormquake. So they're, they, they claim that they're discovering it. They claim they've never seen this before. It's a new phenomenon. And we, we know, you know, it, they, they obviously didn't check to see who's talked about it in the past to make these ridiculous claims. It's not new at all. Um, in fact, there's a whole book by Bill McGuire called Waking the Giant. It's how a change in climate can trigger earthquakes, tsunamis, and volcanoes. Okay, so during times in the past when there was large changes in sea level, large melt of ice, um, for example, coming out of the end of the last ice age, then there was a large uptick of these earthquakes, tsunamis, and volcanoes worldwide. And there's a definite correlation between the, you know, when you have ice rapidly melting and leaving continents, then the stresses on the earth are changing and you can basically trigger all of these other effects. So now I want to look, go to the source and look. So this is a paper that was published just recently, um, Stormquakes. So let's have a look at it. The idea is energetic storms can generate stormquakes, exciting coherent transcontinental surface wave fields. So wave motion on the earth, earthquakes. These stormquakes are effective point sources with equivalent earthquake magnitudes that are greater than 3.5. Okay, so this paper doesn't go far enough. It doesn't talk about the events from Sandy where, where it triggered, you know, strong earthquakes on the other side of the continent, three in fact. Okay, it doesn't go that far, but that's okay. There'll be a paper soon. I mean, it's taken, you know, seven years to do this. Maybe in another four or five, there'll be one talking about those earthquakes. Um, large continental shelves, ocean banks, so like the Grand Banks off Newfoundland. So a continental shelf and then a sharp drop to the abyss basically is required and strong storms are the three factors. Okay, so I'm going to, uh, you know, there's case studies done in here, but before I talk about them, and make sure I don't want to, I don't want to run out of time. I want to make sure I talk about these things. We'll look at the figures first. Okay, so what we have here, the inset, there's North America. Okay, these are regions, the, these uh, kind of bluish mauve, if you like, dots are where earthquakes are occurring. So we've got the Pacific Rim, Ring of Fire, there's uh, earthquakes within the continent, not so many, you know, up in the Arctic down here. You know, and these are the divisions of continental plates. This is where storm quakes, quakes have been detected in all these regions. And here, storm quakes have not been detected. Now, the continental shelf doesn't extend out very far, so we don't get the right sort of bathymetry to have these storm quakes generated. Now, so this is the main, so looking here, these are all the, these triangles are all the seismic stations on North America. These, this is the region without storm quakes, like I said here, the continental shelf doesn't extend out very far, it's too close. Okay, so the conditions aren't met for storm quakes. These are regions with storm quakes, the yellowish areas, and the actual storm quakes are the red dots, okay? And like I said, the earthquakes are up here. Okay, so there's lots of these storm quakes being measured, you know, in this particular study. And the earthquakes, the blue dots up above, greater than magnitude three, shallower than 40 kilometers. They're from 2006 to 2015. Okay, now the next image shows some specific storms and the lighting up of the sensors. So this is Hurricane Bill in 2009, August 15th to 26th, moved up in this path. Okay, there was a, uh, basically earthquakes were triggered here. And basically when it was up here, it lit up these seismic sensors here, these so-called rally waves. So it can deflect the plate and cause vibration on the other side of the continent. So that was shown here in, in the different, these are the amplitude of different quakes. 
between 11.45, 28 seconds and 11.53. Okay, and these were all of these storm quakes that occurred during a three hour window here. Okay, so all of these different storm quakes, seismic disturbances were measured and these are the significant wave heights greater than five meters. You know, so, so the storm moves up, there's significant wave heights greater than five meters. It triggers the vibration of the, um, it triggers a seismic disturbance over the continental shelf. This is how it was actually measured. You can see the line tracks the movement. Um, this is the distance from the epicenter and then the time. So it tracks the movement of, of the time. Okay, so Hurricane Bill generated these um, things. So the rally wave field is A and the storm quakes are B. Okay, and then there's some other storms here. So th here's some more storm quakes that are occurring. This is from a, a hurricane and uh, this is from disturbance in, in 2010, 2007, hurricane tracks. Uh, uh, this is more storm quakes here. This is Hurricane Irene 2011, more storm quakes here off Florida. Um, this is in the Gulf of Mexico, Hurricane Ike 2008, more storm quakes generated here. Uh, Hurricane Gonzala 2014, more storm quakes generated here. And these are storms that have come up in the Pacific and, I, and there were no storm quakes, quakes measured in that particular region. Okay, and then here's some more situations um, where these are, the, these are areas where there's ocean banks. So you've got the proper bathymetry to generate these uh, storm quakes. Pacific hurricanes all here, but no storm quakes. And uh, storm quakes were measured in these, um, in these regions here. Um, and this is her, the path of Hurricane Sandy. Now it doesn't mention up here, there was a quake, the sensors went off and the quake, it did the left turn, just before it did the left turn, sensors went off, another earthquake. And then as it came ashore, another earthquake. Now it misses that, it, this study doesn't mention that at all, but I showed that, I showed you the data from, that I actually uh, posted online at that time. This is some of the bathymetry profiles. So this is a perfect situation that the shelf extends out, you know, almost 400 kilometers. This is off uh, in the northeast, and then it drops off to the ocean abyss. This is the depth in kilometers. So this is a perfect situation, a perfect bank, uh, where you know the hurricane coming ashore here triggers the vibrations, which then propagate across the continent. This is displacement, vertical force profiles, SX, different displacement. So this is the, you know, when the storm comes ashore here, there's uh, a strong displacement. Um, this is uh, sampled at 20 seconds. This is at 30 seconds. So it's the frequency is slower. Um, okay, so basically this paper is talking about it, but it's talking about it as a, as a new phenomena. And, you know, it shouldn't be obviously, you know, here again, here's, you know, if you just Google, you know, Beckwith storms trigger earthquakes, you can find a couple Arctic news articles um, published back online back in, this was November 15th, 2012, a week or two, a couple of weeks after Sandy went ashore. Well, she went ashore October 28th. So two weeks later, um, I wrote about it and blogged. I wasn't doing my videos at the time or it would have been on a video, but I did revisit it in 2017 as I showed in, in the last video. Okay, so, and basically, so, you know, it talks about vibrate. It, basically, this, the, the paper is, is open source, so you can have a look at it. You can read the details and have a look at how they have these arrays or meshes of earthquake sensors, and they analyze the data. So they looked at vibrations in the sensors, and then they worked backwards to look at what triggered the vibration. And they, they talked about, uh, you know, how to separate it from earthquakes that are derived on land. And they talked about, you know, Hurricane Bill and so on. Um, I showed you the figures, you know, it can be winter storms like nor'easters and also uh, these cyclones that do this. Okay, well, thanks for listening.